Well, no, I'm just thinking, I'm sure there was a hamper of cakes with your name on it the other day. Yeah. Yes, but <laughs> there was. But <laughs> I had to do that very secretly. And then I could have said nothing. I could have just said nothing, but I couldn't. I couldn't do it. So I admitted that I had said box. And then I think you'll find, Jace, that I brought it to John's kitchen table. You did. Actually. Where it all started. You see, we've gone for yeah. a There we go. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's John Lamerton here alongside my good friend and business partner, Mr. Jason Brockman. We are here for another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast, where as always, it is our job to help you get more customers and make more money without just working harder. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this month's episode. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast. Uh, John and Jason here as always. Today we are not joined by one of our one percenters, but instead we're joined by Vicky who joined, who works with us on the One Percent Club looking after some of our one percenters. Um, hello Vicky. Hello. This is your first ever podcast, isn't it? It is. This side of the screen, yep. <laughs> it is. But I think you've probably our most avid uh, listener. Of the podcast. I think you've listened to every single one because you do the editing. I do. Um, So the reason it sounds so highly polished and professional, other than the hosts, obviously, is all thanks to you, isn't it? Yes, (laughs) it is. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You can take all the credit. So we wanted to get you on today because we've got some anniversaries coming up. So the One Percent Club is uh, six years old this month. Uh, The podcast is six years old in January and you've been with us for four years now haven't you? I have yeah. What day did you join us? I joined on firework night on the 5th of November. There we go bonfire night I can I get to make the same joke every year don't I? You do yes and it I don't think it's ever been funny <laughs> but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> You're supposed to say it never tires John I love it yeah. so much. <laughs> yes. yes when I, I joined the company I think you were April Fools, weren't you? Oh, you know it already. Yeah, two, I do. Sorry. Two thousand and three, April Fools' Day. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And there's a joke that goes with that, which was never funny either. So don't. No. Worry. no. I'm, I'm in your uh, bag. <laughs> right. Well, there, there we go. We're one minute into the podcast, and I've been insulted by both of you already. So thank you very much for that. We just know which way this is going to go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we, we're going to have a little bit of nostalgia today um and i know we've kind of touched on some of these things before but actually it's very interesting to look at how businesses evolve we're going to look today at how to grow a small business into a large business Um, this came about in the towards the back end of evergreen assets i kind of jumped in the old delorean went back in time and said like these are what my businesses looked like when they first started this was version 1.0 of the sports betting business and the coaching business and then jumped forward and heads hey this is what they look like now the two bear no resemblance whatsoever but over the year now and it's been nearly a year since evergreen assets came out i've probably talked about that particular element of evergreen assets more than any other because i speak to lots of people who want to start a business um i had a conversation with the one percenter yesterday who said i'm looking at pivoting i want to evolve my business into something very different i know what it's going to look like when it's finished but i haven't got a clue where to start or what it looks like in between so he's got this vision of um i don't know 15 employees um multi-million pound turnover but he hasn't got a clue what the minimum minimum viable product looks like so i thought it'd be useful to delve into the the annals of history, um, while we all three of us still remember it, <laughs> and talk about actually where the where our businesses started from and what they've looked like over the year. And it is this idea of, and I'm going to get the first one, in constant, never-ending improvement. <laughs> uh, audio listeners of the podcast cannot see Jason just on a drat sign because we had a little <laughs> chat before recording about who was going to get that line in the most. One nil to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive back into kind of where we all started. And as I said, I'd, I'd like for everyone listening to just think about where your business is now. And I know many people will be listening and think, I don't yet have a business. Some will be thinking I've got an established business. Others are very well established. 
is it always evolving? Now, the definition of small and large is very open to interpretation. Um, I We had uh, Plymouth Argyle chairman Simon Hallett as a guest speaker for us in the 1% Club a few months ago. And I made the mistake whilst talking to him of describing Plymouth Argyle as a large business, uh, at which point he absolutely shot me down. Now, I thought, think of Argyle as a pretty large business. They own a stadium. Um, they employ well over 100 people and their turnover is in the tens of millions. To me, that's a big business. Um, Simon, however, is an uh, investment fund manager, so he's used to dealing with the likes of Apple, Google, Amazon, trillion dollar businesses. As far as he's concerned, Argyle are just a tiny little minnow. We are absolutely tiny. So whatever your you know, listeners now will be thinking, what well, is my business? Small, big, whatever. It's open to interpretation. What we're going to talk about today is taking a business that is, and certainly for us, it was one man band, a couple of people sat around a kitchen table and scaling it up to a level that is maybe not considered large by some people, but definitely considerably larger than it was. So, Becky, do you remember what things were like in the 1% Club when you first joined? What what were your first impressions of, of the club and the members and just the way everything was set up about four years ago? Yeah, so I think obviously from when I first joined, from first meeting you in that coffee shop, you, you had the vision of how it was going to be. Um, I think my first meeting was at a local hotel with the members. So everything had been done virtually up until those monthly meetings. So the first time I met everybody, the existing members, yeah, was at a local hotel, um, sat around a big kind of square table, uh, pens and papers, I think, courtesy of the hotel, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, and just a, a, a very informal chat with members. Um, I think that was probably my first experience. Um, I took over, obviously, from a VA, didn't I? So yeah, that's right. That transition period was quite difficult because I think they worked up north somewhere, I think. So everything was done remotely. Um, so the transition was done, I would say, quite slowly over a, a, quite a long period of time to get up to speed as to where we were at that point. Um, interaction with the members was instant because it was through the Facebook group. Um, so started to learn more about the members, their businesses, where they were. Um, so yeah, that that's probably my first first impression of of everything really, and just a little bit of chaos here and there really, I suppose, in the nicest possible way. <laughs> um, yeah, just l lots and lots of different things going on, um, and then we started to streamline. I think, didn't we? After after a little while. Yeah, I think that's one of the first things you said that vision for the future. It was always very clear what we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. We just, have had, I think, needed to accept what it was at that time. And you, if you came in, let's say you you came to one of our local meetings. So the One Percent Club was very Plymouth focused yeah. at that time. We were starting, probably starting to evolve away from a Plymouth centric focus. Um, COVID helped a lot with that because we couldn't do, physically couldn't do local meetings. Yeah. But we had at that time this monthly local meeting in a five-star hotel. Now, had you joined us probably six months earlier, you wouldn't have been in a five-star hotel. You would have been in a, what's the official star rating of that pub, Jace? Oh, it's a, it's a camera listed pub. So it's great for its real ales, not so great for its real customers. <laughs> it's not great for its warm, welcoming atmosphere, is it? <laughs> yeah, they did good good beer. That's as good as it gets, I think, really. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we were in J uh, Jason's local pub. Yeah. Um, which they had a nice big function room. And uh, it was the second pub we'd actually tried because uh, our previous venue, I think, had just forgotten that we we would be there once a month. Uh, we were turning the lights on ourselves. Uh, I think one night we actually finished the meeting and they closed up downstairs and forgotten about us. And we were just upstairs. But yeah, we were trying to encourage people to 
develop this ambitious lifestyle business. And we were talking about um, optimizing businesses and growing businesses in a bar full of people who just wanted to get drunk on a Monday night. And yeah, there was, uh, we, we were nicely positioned as long as there wasn't, was it a quiz night or there was something happening in the function room one night, wasn't it? I can't remember what, what that was, Jason. Yeah, quiz or darts or something like that. So we kind of got, got the bar, didn't we? And on a Monday night, uh, people who just seriously wanted to get drunk, Monday nights are pretty serious, aren't they? So, so that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't save it to the weekend. Let's just let's start the week as we mean to go on kind of thing. So, yeah, so that was uh, yeah, an interesting experience, wasn't it, really? It was. And, uh, we, were, and we weren't millionaires between that thirty minutes that we got asked. <laughs> we yes, it was. Yeah, we had, uh, it was. It was one guy in particular, and yeah, throughout the night he got progressively more and more drunk. And every time we were positioned, um, let's say, I think I was sat at the bar, and then we had tables around. And so, in order to for this chap to go to the gents, he had to walk through our one percent club meeting. <laughs> And every time he did, he went, are you guys millionaires yet then? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful job. And after that, we moved to a five-star hotel. <laughs> but before the pub, before the first pub, it was my kitchen table. And that was the very, very first beginnings of the 1% Club. And if people see our business now and they see that, you know, I've got three books published we've got nearly a hundred episodes of this podcast we've got more than a hundred people in the one percent club um we've had members who've been with us pretty much since the start and it's grown to become quite a big thing well actually it started off and it was six people around my kitchen table and the content we now have a website uh, a members area which has 60 pre-recorded hour-long masterclasses. It's got a couple of hundred coaching calls in there, these resources to download, there's case studies, there's all sorts of Netflix-style stuff. There's probably, what, a thousand hours worth of content there. When we first started, we sat around the table and we had a chat. What's, what's the biggest problems that you've got? To do? What's the one thing you're going to do next month to improve your business. That was that was the simplicity of this. We'd get six people around the table and we'd say to them, what are you going to do next in the next month to improve your business? We'd give them a uh, book of the month to go away and read. Go away and read the book. We'll discuss it next month. That was it. That was the entire business model. Six people, kitchen table, give them a book to read, ask them a question. <laughs> that, that was it. And it's evolved since then because we added stuff as we went. So 1% Club started in November. Podcast came out in January. Big Ideas for Small Businesses launched in July. And we just added things that, oh, we, know, we now need to create these masterclasses or we now need to actually do these online calls and I think the tipping point where we left my kitchen was when there weren't enough seats one month where we grew and six became 10 and 10 became 12 and eventually 12 became 13. And there are only 12 seats in my kitchen. So other than, and we did discuss the possibility of playing musical chairs just as an icebreaker every, every month, we decided that this needs to scale up. Again, it started as a Plymouth thing. And then suddenly... We had somebody, I think someone from Exeter said, oh, I know you guys. Can I join in? Oh, well, you can do, but you're going to need to come to Plymouth. And then all of a sudden we had somebody from New Zealand say, can I join? Like, oh, well, you can't come to Plymouth, but you can if you want to. But it, it's a bit of a commute. And we reacted. And this is how businesses evolved, particularly, I think, in those early days. You know, you said something a bit earlier, actually, when you're talking to Vicky about it and you said uh, you, you had this vision and, and Vicky said you had this vision. You came to me with this vision of what you wanted to create um, and, and what you wanted to do. And, and and my recollections, which aren't always as great, isn't usually what you want to do. It's usually what you don't want to do. And actually, I don't want it to be this and I don't want it to be that. And I don't want to have 
meetups i don't i don't want because that takes a you know a few hours out of my day. i don't want to have conferences because that takes a huge amount of time out. i don't want to do this and i don't want to do that and i don't want to and my recollections are that actually we took away an awful lot of what we didn't want to do from from experiences that you've had with other place, places and things like that and actually the, the product that we kind of developed and now have is the things that were left i guess but also the things that we could purposely go we've got the resource we've got the time we want to do that we want to do this we want to do that no actually that takes too much time no i'm not doing that and actually that it was more about that subtraction because that was that probably that that year's word of the year for you and it was that uh, and actually it was like no i'm not doing that i don't want to do that i don't want to do that and actually this is this is what we're going to do and um yeah that, and that's that that's that i think is where we kind of developed and i think if you've got a business idea it's a really good place to start to be fair is what don't you want it to be doing for you or what don't you want it to end up looking yeah. like um because that's a really good way of building the right product for you and your business and, you, and your resources and whatnot than it is to actually think oh yeah i want this ma massive business it's going to have millions of pounds it's going to have millions of staff it's going to have all of this because generally speaking most people don't wake up in the morning and think that's what i want <laughs> or at least that's not what i need <laughs> so and, that, and i think that's uh, yeah what don't i want it to do is a really good question to ask and, and it's one that you use all, all of the time yeah or what can you strip out what can you just take away if you're developing let's say developing an app or a piece of software rather than thinking oh, i know that i'd like it to be really powerful and have this feature and that feature and that feature that might be version four but what is the most basic version you can get out there um i had a story the other day about the sony walkman apparently the engineers at sony when they first designed the walkman they went to the um the uh, chief architect there and said um good news we can add a recording button and it's only going to add like 15 cents to the unit price. And the, the chief architect said, no. He said, don't do it. He said, but, but boss, look, if we do this, it's going to add 15 cents to the thing. We can add a dollar. He said, no, no. People need to understand what this thing does. If you put a recording button on it, they think it's a dictaphone. Ben, when you're going back to the 80s here, when no one had seen Walkmans before, they need to know it's for playing music. It's for playing tapes whilst out and about. We are stripping back the features that we could add to get something out there. And it's that importance of just getting started as well, because like the guy I was talking about yesterday, who, um, you know, he's got a very clear vision of what the end goal is, but not what version 1.0 is. And it, it was very difficult to say to him, well, okay, I know you want to do six tracks here and each track's going to have five bits underneath it. And each of those five bits is going to have two bits underneath that. But for now we need one track. We need your version of a kitchen table with six people around it doing two things. And eventually, you know, again, how do a lot of what we added into the one percent club, in fact, pretty much everything we've added to the Monsanto Club has come from somebody, one of our paying customers saying to us, can you do this? And we don't always say yes, because we still say no to stuff now, because now we've got people asking for stuff that is already on that list of subtracted things that you've talked about before. Um, yeah. do you, I mean, Vicky, you must see with member interactions, mm -hmm a reticence to get started is, is that is that fair to say yeah absolutely I think just touching back quickly on what Jay said there the meetups were you say they were local but actually one of my first memories was Tracy one of our <laughs> existing yeah. members still now that was kind of here trying to put systems and processes in place for her business in the UK whilst residing in Spain yeah I've skipped forward four years that business is running itself we had like James come up from Launceston I think wasn't it he yeah. the retirement but also building something quite relatively small wasn't it um yeah. and actually I think those meetups almost became counterintuitive because you, you we were looking to try and help people with this ambitious lifestyle business but they were having to allocate x amount of time to come to this meetup yeah and to do where now not having that and having everything kind of virtually where they can tap in if they can they don't need to move from the front room to do that or if they can't make it for whatever reason they can catch it back up meeting now for social purposes like trips to alton towers and things like that yeah. actually is their lifestyle isn't it as a, they still you know business talk is still ha happening but it's on a social level as opposed to i've got this monthly meetup i've got to leave by so and so i've got to get there to so and so um 
and I think that transition's been really nice. Um, but yeah, certainly sort of going back to what you saying, with members coming in, they they have 101 ideas, 101 ideas, and and it's always the bigger picture. It's never, this is where I am and this is where I want to be. It's there. There's no bits in between. They've got the, they're mainly their big picture. And then it's just kind of stripping that all back down. And when I first started, all of these words, I'll be honest with you, were like a foreign language. I, I was a complete blank canvas. I was a complete sponge to this business because I didn't come from that sector. I didn't come from a small business, a medium business or anything. Um, so, you know, when you first had a masterclass, I was like, hell is a master class like you know what's a coaching course so and over time it's actually quite amazing how much I've picked up and how much I've actually taken in without even realizing yeah. um now so we now, tell you to just 80 20 your hedgehogs and remove the friction from your pumpkin exactly too. that yeah and now I'm talking about you know two negative quarters of GDP growth you know <laughs> and these are words that I never ever would have expected to come out of my mouth but you know, I I now find myself invested in in the members' journeys. When, if I'm completely honest, at the very beginning, they were all just members on an Excel spreadsheet that I really didn't know who they were or what their background was, and certainly not what their vision was, certainly not what the purpose of them joining was. And I think over that time now, especially you know the OGs as I call them, um, I feel like they're friends now. You know, I, I feel like I know everything about them now, yeah. and you know where we've done and sharpened up our intakes and so on and made them so much more personal I do feel comfortable that now that you know if you said to me you know what does so and so do what what's the plans if I couldn't tell you straight away I could log on to another screen and tell you exactly what it is that they're looking to do and yeah. and I think those changes have been and I really want to get those words in that you said so it could be one all but I cannot remember for love normally constant constant never Never ending. I'll get one in as well. No, that was mine. That We're was on a draw mine. now. We're on a draw. No, no, <laughs> no. Gotta no. remember if you want to count. <laughs> I need to write it down. I can't pull a pen. Um, but yeah, and and those changes I think are, are huge. And yeah, just going back to how much I've actually taken in myself, um, you know, about languages and and speech that I've never ever known anything about. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's it's it is a constant iteration i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sneak another one say you can't sneak another one straight after that one john that doesn't <laughs> because the the nature of the one percent club when we we close the doors for five months at a time and then we open them for september and march every year so every kind of well this this sort of time october to kind of christmas we start talking about the previous intake and the intake before that and what have we learned from this and we notice, okay, so this person has joined and said that they're, they're struggling. Why are they struggling? Or they, they, their onboarding experience wasn't optimal because something went wrong here. Okay, well, we can change that next time. Um, this is where, you know, in the last intake, we've sent everybody a, a bloody book that didn't exist six months ago. That's just another iteration because we've identified, well, actually, when we look at, previous uh, the previous three or four intakes before that there was a common what happens now what what what's supposed to happen next so having identified that's our probably our greatest area for and we keep calling them one percent improvements but in reality those are greater than one percent improvements you know the, the whole ethos about turning a small business into a large business is if you leave your business if you leave your small business one percent better every week and do that for a couple of years you're going to end up with a large R business as I said in the small and large is completely subjective um something else that i think ricky you touched on just now is kind of figuring out how we actually help people and mm. what the club actually exists for so when we first launched for example this podcast this podcast was not called the ambitious lifestyle business podcast uh it was called the big idea podcast that was based on our company name was called big idea so we thought well, we'll name it after ourselves and our tagline was helping small businesses think big. 
that was what I thought we were about. I thought we were about championing the underdog and giving like tiny, tiny one man bands the tools that we've used ourselves to scale a business to a decent level and digital marketing. And that I've seen from the investment world. As we got further into that, and if you, you know, all of our podcasts for the first 42 episodes were around, here are ways you can grow your business. And it was all business growth. You probably didn't hear too much of the word improvement, let alone constant, never-ending improvement. You didn't hear those words it for those first 42 episodes. But actually, it's when I chucked a book out there about growing your business, tagline of that book, simple, practical tools and tactics to help your small business grow. Growth was our buzzword. It was then getting the feedback from real customers, real readers of my book, leaving reviews saying, oh, I love what John said about lifestyle businesses. Oh, lifestyle businesses are real businesses. And the light bulb that is behind Jason's head now on a mug went off and I realized how important something that I just took for granted. Well, we, we run an ambitious lifestyle business. I've, we've used that term internally in our company, Jason, for what, 12 years now? Mm-hmm, pretty much. Um, yeah. Shared it in big ideas as almost as an aside. It's just that, oh, here's something we've got in our staff contracts. We've got this term ambitious lifestyle business. We are an ambitious lifestyle business. And that, resonated with people in a way that I didn't expect and so it took us a couple of years to realize that but once we had that feedback and this is why you need to launch something tiny something small just a few people you need to throw your work out into the world and see what real people tell you they value that's how the big idea podcast turned into the ambitious lifestyle business podcast that's where the additional books came from that's where we added the website everything grows from that initial seed of i think this is what it's going to look like but my customers will tell me what it should look like (laughs) it's a good feedback loop isn't it definitely And and i think one of the areas that a lot of business owners do struggle is they, they've got this vision of version 10 and they don't like the vision of version one <laughs> and they don't like not knowing what version two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine are going to be. Mm-hmm. But that is the process you have to put out there because you don't get to version 10 without a feedback loop of customers going, I like this, I don't like that. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. And that's that's one of the things that we, which I obviously tackle in the one-to-ones and having the nice day plans and keeping people on track and, and things like that. Everybody wants that finished polished product, which um, which is you know absolutely the shiny as, as, as you want and, and, and does everything with his bells and his whistles and things. And for, the, for those people aiming for that, the chances of the chances that they've been aiming for it for five or more years before joining us is is very high <laughs> most people have been in that i've been working on this thing i just haven't managed to get it done because i've been focused on this and this and this and then i find that and i want to add this um i've heard that same so, so many times in our in our welcome calls that i do um that you know and it's kind of i just really want to get this done now mm. is, is 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 a real common thing amongst the, the the business owners that join us in that in that field I've, I've, I've used it for loads it's that procrastination to perfection they want to just continue to get this thing as perfect as they possibly can before they'll put it into that real world but that procrastination means that they don't ever 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 do it because they're always seeking the next thing to improve it with the next bell to add the next whistle it needs the next bit of polish i need to put on it the next feature i need to put some of these features in it as well or oh, i think this would be really useful i read this the other day let me throw that in there too and actually this thing never ever gets launched and and, and it doesn't um and yeah when you talk about that minimum viable product 
great. Let, let's see what that's going to look like. Let's have a founder launch. Let's just get a few people using whatever it is that you've got to do. Let's see what that 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 bit is. Then let's make those continual, never ending improvements to that product. Continual. I don't think we. Don't, I'm not allowing that one. I'm continuing it. That's what I'm doing. Doing some <laughs> a little bit different here. Going to take it away from you um, and uh, keep making those uh, those changes. <laughs> Stop making me do it again. Um, so keep making those changes in order to improve that product. To, and as you say, be guided a little bit about what your your customer wants. There is always the danger that you then start uh, the, the 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 customers start uh, telling you what you need to do with your product, and you start creating a product that isn't really what you were you wanted to go doing things you didn't want it to do, mm. and using resources you don't have, etc. Those kind of things. So you do have a, have a little bit of judgment to that. Um, we've we've been guilty of doing that a fair few times, not necessarily with the ambitious lifestyle business and the one percent club, but certainly in our in our sports betting business, we've certainly let the customer tell us what we sh- what we don't want to be doing and, um, and then doing it because <laughs> they've said it. Um, so yeah, so there's there is that little bit of uh, yeah you have to put a bit of filter to it, but yeah, without um, yeah getting started, it's it's important to do that and, and to get that started. I think okay. um, COVID gave a real opportunity as well. Um, certainly your your mindset around COVID when everybody else seemed to be in such a, you know, an awful period of their, you know, time and worrying about everything. I think the way you approached it was, okay, let's use this time to perfect maybe things that have been done over time in your business. Let's go back to those and let's use the time that we've got now to get them even better. Um, and and I think that was really important for business owners. And I also think that for me personally, I, I didn't realise I had an ambitious lifestyle. Um, actually, you know, when COVID came in so many friends and, you know, other people struggling or not being able to work or furloughed or, you know, my circumstances didn't change in the sense that, you know, my job was here at the kitchen table. Um, and I think for a lot of members, having that normality through the most abnormal time so far of our lives I think was really grounding um and you know, and a lot of our members did struggle massively through through that time um and I think being having that kind of library that we have of master classes and, and coaching calls to be able to go back and and look at those and I mean the coaching calls are on there now aren't they you know how we're yeah. going to get through this pandemic and and so on and I think your the word you hated the most at that time was pivoting how people are going to pivot their way through um and so on but yes thinking back to those sort of times as well when because it's the club isn't a one-size-fits-all because the business owners that come to us some haven't got a business some have got a business some would like a business or they had a business um so it isn't uh not everybody's the same nobody's the same actually in the club whatsoever so I think having all this I think you said like a Netflix style you know subcategories of people do dip in and dip out of what's relevant to them at that time. And that's something we didn't have when I joined. So I think that's a huge, a huge plus. I remember like some of the very early meetings, particularly the local meetings, um, but actually some of the online Zoom meetings we did as well. Um, and we would have sort of very different businesses around the table. We'd have businesses that were turning over millions. We had businesses that, employed a lot of people we had um very smart marketers that we knew from other networks we brought into the group and then we'd have very very low level members who had come into our group and every month they'd ask the same question what should i post on facebook and you could see collectively everyone going oh no not this question again just see see previous answer whereas now if that same member were to come into the club today they could watch the social media masterclass and discover what they need to post on Facebook if they've got that very very newbie very low level question not a problem there is a Facebook group you can ask these questions what you wouldn't want to do is be in a high level mastermind with very very switched on marketers making decisions that are affecting high level businesses and ask that same question because that doesn't serve anyone because the answer that person is going to get from someone who controls a, I don't know, 20 grand a month advertising budget is we'll just pay for Facebook ads, just get someone to do it. They haven't got the budget to do that. And conversely, that business owner who's got the 20 grand a month budget is thinking, Oh God, this is, this is why am I, why am I here? Why is this the place for me? Um, 
Jason, I actually, sorry, I was just going to ask actually, Vic, over the over that four years, have you noticed a different kind of business owner that's joined us, or a different? Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? Actually, uh, have they come different needs, or have they just in different positions, different places, or different mindsets? I think that's uh, the thing because we've made real conscious effort with our marketing for intakes and stuff like that on trying to attract the right people for our group Definitely. and it's really interesting you say that everybody is different every yeah. business is different everyone is different they're all unique yet the reason why they come and the reason why they stay is because of the like-minded meeting like-minded people and right. that's really and it's really quite interesting that there's you know there's that um gap really isn't there between yeah. being completely unique and actually being like-minded and trying to get that <laughs> that gap a bit closed so it's really interesting actually you notice the style you know the the value or the difference of yeah, the type yeah. of the people joining us yeah absolutely I, I, th I think the main difference is the ones that I see are the ones that come in and they do do the work so we've had a few <laughs> forgive me if, if this sounds awful but some that maybe have come and gone that snowflakes that's the word you're looking for Vic is snowflakes a little yeah and also the other end of well I don't need to do that and I don't need to do that. And I don't need to do this. And actually, no, this club isn't for me. And, you know, and actually the ones that haven't done the work are why kind of they're still no further forward, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I think the calibre of member has definitely changed over time. I think people changed during COVID. I think people's what they identified as what was important to them changed massively. A lot of business models did have to adapt. Um, almost a knee-jerk reaction I don't think any business owner potentially plan for a pandemic in our lifetime um, the like-minded people for me is, is what I find the most pleasure in that sounding board on that Facebook group where if people are having a bad day or they really are head in hands with their business everybody is there everybody and it and people that haven't even met face to face they've only ever met virtually and, and they offer sound advice they pull their hearts out that to me I think is is probably one of the nicest things I find with the club. Um, but yeah, I would say that the difference in people and characteristics have changed massively. I think the people more so now are, they are willing to do the work. I think they your one-to-ones have increased massively to the point where you, you're fully booked pretty much every week with the people that want you to keep them on track and accountability I still think it is key for people even in the ones that say oh, I don't need it actually once they've had a couple of calls they realize actually they did need that because they go off on tangents down all different paths and actually then they're not focusing on that thing that they had talked spoken to you about two weeks before and and you pulling them back in Jace I think is they don't really realize it maybe but it they're working towards something each week um so yeah, I absolutely think that it's it's changed the amount of the sorry the kind of people that we've got in now are are different definitely. But then we've still got our OGs, so who I love dearly, um, you know, and they're still doing the work, you know, they're still because it's changing. It changes all the time. It's not like they've learned everything. It's not like they've learned everything and and that's it. There's no more to learn. There is, and you know, as as the world changes, as life's changing, it's it's changing for us too. So. So there's always constant, never-ending changes to be made. Yeah, I just can't get that in my head. I cannot get that in my head. Okay, it's can I, C-A-N-I, constant and never-ending improvement. No. There you go. That's the no, way to Because I can have a slip of the tongue and it won't come anything like that. <laughs> yeah. I, for me, I think the... I'm just going to have to bear that on there. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing for me is the evolution of our members and the for anybody listening your customers your target market may well evolve and this is the, where the ambitious lifestyle business ethos came from and i think in the early days of the one percent club we attracted we were naturally attractive to lifestyle business owners who we tried to make ambitious and i think now we are more attractive to ambitious business owners who have realized that they'd quite like a better lifestyle. And I think that for us is a far better fit than trying to drag people who don't want to work hard. They just, they, they want, yeah, they, yes, they want to do the school runs. They want to go surfing. They want to play golf whenever. But beyond that, they don't have many ambitions and they certainly don't want to 
take on the level of work and business that we we actually preach. So for us now, we're attracting, uh, ironically, I think the opposite of what we'd gone out to. We'd gone out saying, hey, lifestyle businesses are great. We're actually converting people to the idea of, I was chatting with a guy about this yesterday. I'm going to be on a podcast soon talking about how you can own a lifestyle business and grow wealth because this guy and particularly his audience felt that you did one or the other. You either had a lifestyle business or you were wealthy. And I want to make the point that actually you can do both. And I think it's far easier for us to talk to uh, ambitious, wealthy, successful, established business owners and convince them to have a better lifestyle than it is to, I don't know, canvas the beach, <laughs> find people who've got a fantastic lifestyle already mm. and convince them to earn more money with a, more ambition because they've already reached their ambitions. They've got the lifestyle they want. I think there's a third group as well, isn't there? And that's those that work really hard in the business and don't know what a lifestyle bit is for. They like the idea of it, but never quite never quite got that idea of what it's about i think that's a third group of people that we uh, that we see coming through mm. not so much now but that's certainly in in, in the olden days it's kind of actually now really busy doing the do and really busy doing all of that and actually i haven't got time to make those improvements to make that time adjustment so that actually they can then start to enjoy what the, the lifestyle looks like yeah it's amazing how many people have been in business for 10 15 20 years and not considered what they actually want out of life mm. um I think a lot of it is just being in that hamster wheel, isn't it? Hamster wheel. Uncomfortable, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just scared yeah. as well. I think, you know, we a member that sticks out to me is somebody that had left full-time employment within the education sector. It didn't, you know, was a teacher and a, a good teacher and actually could see flaws in a system that she could not control. Mm. What do you do? Do you go with it? Well, she had an idea and a vision of what, how she could teach and how she and a can. Very, do very it. supportive husband as well. Apparently, and um, <laughs> not, yeah. not what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know that that to me was probably one of my favourite transitions because she could see the flaw. She couldn't actually change them herself within the system that she was in, hmm. but she knew how she could do it if she didn't. And yeah. you know, make that leap, make that step was a huge thing I think huge thing to do and we've had a few members I think like that you know that have been terrified I suppose is probably the best way and yeah. with a bit of kind of encouragement and reassurance and they're now in a completely different place and they're always so rewarding to see those journeys always so rewarding yeah you know and and you know that said teacher uh your lovely wife you know my my son actually benefited from the service that she now provides yeah. And, you know, and, and I think we see that a lot in the club, how people kind of utilise. And I think you were saying, Jace, how co the consumer changes all the time. Like Caroline now with hot, hot water bottles. Now none of us can afford to heat our homes. Her business model was ready for this exact moment. You know, the business model, she'd done the work. She'd done everything that was asked of her. Her business model was ready to go to the consumer. And now the consumer is there because hot water bottles all round for the foreseeable you know um steve has another example you know something we do now is you know recognize people that have been with us and you know the anniversaries yeah. um you know they get i'm gonna go with rupert on this i am a little bit bitter that i don't get cakes i know i get firework night i know i get an annual display of fireworks every night every year but you know the steve steve what if you, what you don't get anything I'm just thinking I'm sure there was a hamper of cakes with your name on it the other day yeah. yes but <laughs> there was but <laughs> I had to do that that. very secretly and then I could have said nothing I could have just said nothing but I couldn't I couldn't do it so I admitted that I had said box and then I think you'll find Jace that I brought it to John's kitchen table you did Actually. where it all started you see we've gone for yeah. weeks there we go <laughs> But yes, you know, like those, those kind of things, that's from a member. So, uh, yeah, we have such a, a diverse group of members, I think, with such a diverse group of businesses and so on. I mean, to me, the things that stick in my head all the time is like Ian Bluck floating past on a flamingo, with, you know, <laughs> casually in the back of a, yeah, and that's where the flamingo was, was born. Yeah. Um, 
people listening to this are going to be like, what, what on earth is the flamingo relevant to anything? <laughs> talk about flamingos out of the 1% club. So, uh, yeah, say no more. <laughs> yeah. So That's our secret you can't find out yeah. anymore unless you come to the 1% don't, club. Don't, don't look at the Yeah, Clark, you know, it's, um, it's things like that. that are really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is and yeah. the thing is we've the the kind of functionary what we deliver in the club changes but the ethos doesn't the idea that when we first started that we want to support the underdog that we wanted to build a real community of like-minded business owners that we wanted to have fun while doing it and not take ourselves too seriously that remains um one of our latest um one of the latest september intakes said to me last week so last week we did a very serious call about you know a potential upcoming recession and we talked about two negative quarters of consecutive gdp uh, reduction and we, it was you know it could have been a very dry topic but he said i love the fact that you just mixed some crap jokes in there um and i said well that is entirely what we're about yes we'll give you the information you need but who says we have to do it in a death by powerpoint way no we're gonna have fun doing it this is what the club's about it's not for everyone um some people want a really serious um you know high high brow club that's not the one percent club it, and it never will be um what it will be if we travel six years into the future i don't really know what it's going to look like in six years time other than we'll still be having fun we'll still be championing small businesses and everything else is up for debate because all i can tell you is going to happen is we are going to continue with our process of constant never ending improvement we're going to keep leaving our business one percent better each and every week as i know all of our listeners are as well which means that success growth if you want growth but certainly a better business and a better lifestyle becomes inevitable because if you leave your business one percent better every week for six years magical stuff happens jace you want to ask your final question that we haven't prepped vicky for that we're going to surprise her with now Oh, Vicky's listened to every one of our podcasts. She knows. <laughs> you see the face there? She just realised what's coming. <laughs> Vicky might be able to tell you what it is. What does an ambitious lifestyle business look like for you? That's the one. That's a good question. Is it that one? I think yes. I kind of already answered it, really. I think it's the, the beauty of being able to work around everything else that's going on. I think I didn't realise how lucky I was until COVID came. And my work stayed the same. For me, I, I find it just massively rewarding watching people's journeys. And yeah, I mean, it, it gives me the time to be at home. I mean, I'm really surprised that an animal hasn't joined us for this call because that's what normally happens. On the Bruno call. was still with us. Oh, he'd, he'd have been on the table now. Oh, I know. I know. But we, we do have said injuries from said dogs. So they're probably hanging their heads in shame at the moment. But um. Yeah, I, I think it's just for me being able to still pick up my children from school or from work to be able to do this kind of thing in the evening or, you know, first thing in the morning, at a weekend, whenever, whenever I choose to do it is, um, is for me, priceless. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for joining us, Vicky. Thank you for being a fantastic member of our team that kind of looks after our supporters, uh, our, our group. In- our supporters, yes. Supporters, yeah, in <laughs> such a great way. <laughs> You've been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, fan- fantastic. Thank you very much, Vicky. Uh, you've been a beacon of constant, never ending improvement. And on that note, I'm going to sign off. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> See, no one's getting any more words in now. No one can get another one. I think I've won. Does that sound right? It sounds like you might have won, John. Yeah, because not all of us can have these constant, never ending improvements. But I was really stopped counting. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. See you next time, everybody. Bye bye. So there we are, another episode in the can. Um, How was it for you? Please let us know um, however you listen to these podcasts. Um, Please leave a review on that platform. Let us know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like, and how we can improve to make this show even better for you. We'll see you next time.